The World Bank just published its influential and prestigious report, Doing Business 2016. Macedonia climbed from the 14th place last year to the 12th place this year, ahead of countries like Germany, Canada, Australia, and even the reform champion Estonia. We must give credit where credit is due. The governments under the Gruevski uh, leadership have reformed the business environment in Macedonia, have made it more entrepreneurship oriented, have invited foreign investors to come in, and some of them did. There is no question that Macedonia has been transformed into a business destination much more friendly to businessmen and to entrepreneurs in general. However, in the past three years, businessmen, even supporters of the government, have been complaining of a gradual deterioration. They have been complaining of harassment by the tax authorities, of violations of the law by the state, of arbitrary decisions by various administrative agencies, of favoritism and cronyism, of increased bureaucracy and even increased tax burden. With all these complaints ever mounting, ever increasing, especially in the last year, how come Macedonia is doing better? How come the ranking improved? This has to do with the report, its methodology and its structure. Doing business is issued annually. It, is, it comprises several parameters, a dozen or so parameters. Each parameter consists of a question. How easy it is to do business? How easy it is to register a new firm? How easy it is to connect to the electricity grid? And how easy it is to protect minority shareholder rights? And so on and so forth. The answers to these questions are tallied, given a numerical value, and then processed, and out comes the ranking. The problem is that these parameters are very easy to manipulate. A country just has to concentrate on one or two of them, improve these one or two dramatically, and thereby improve its ranking, even if other parameters are actually deteriorating. The fact is that in the case of Macedonia, two of these parameters improved, three of these parameters actually deteriorated, some of them seriously. And yet, Macedonia's ranking has improved. So something's wrong. One problem is that some of these parameters are given equal weighting. This creates a situation where the importance of marginal aspects of conducting business is heavily exaggerated. For example, why is it so important how long it takes to register a new company? What's the big difference if you can register a company in 14 days or in 24 days? Why is it given such weight? How important it is whether you can connect to the electricity grid in three days rather than five days? Why is it given such weight? So the parameters are easy to manipulate and their weighting does not reflect business realities, the day-to-day -day act of management and conducting business. This has to do with the fact that the people who compile these surveys have never been done business in their lives. Next, there is the issue of the methodology. The ranking is based on a survey, and the survey is conducted once a year and is based on interviews with lawyers and businessmen in the destination country. But wait a minute. If there is an atmosphere of fear, uncertainty in the destination country, if people are afraid to speak up, if there is mass eavesdropping, if they don't know who is looking behind their back, if they don't know who will report them to whom, if there is this total distrust in institutions, how can you expect lawyers and businessmen to give any answer except answers that support the government's policies? In other words, we have a confirmation bias. In countries which are 
problematic as far as the rule of law goes in countries where institutions are dysfunctional and in countries where fear reigns, in countries which are deteriorating uh, in the political aspect. In these countries, you cannot expect honest answers from lawyers and businessmen. It is no wonder, for instance, that Belarus attained top-level rankings repeatedly. Most importantly, some of the parameters that comprise the report go up and down 50 places every year. No reform can be implemented in one year. And no reform that can be implemented in one year can create such a massive change in the ranking of a country. For a parameter to go up and down 50 places, as has been the case with Switzerland and Macedonia, something is wrong. And what is wrong is the methodology of the survey and the methodology of the report itself. The report and the rankings are unreliable because they change so frequently from one year to another. And therefore, they cannot be giving a real picture of what's happening. One problem is that the report is a snapshot. It describes the situation at a given moment. It doesn't say anything about what happens after that moment. Let me explain. For instance, there is a question in how easy it is to register a business. But what happens after you register a business? How easy it is, once you have the business registered, to actually conduct business, do business, make money, without conflicting with the authorities and their cronies? Another issue. How easy it is to connect to the electricity grid? That's one of the questions in the survey and one of the parameters that determines the ranking. But once you connect to the electricity grid, what is the cost? How expensive is electricity? And what is the reliability of the grid? Can you trust the grid to deliver electricity promptly, properly, reliably and predictably? So these are questions of before and after. The act of registering a company, the act of connecting to the electricity grid, is a point in time. But businesses don't live in a point in time. Businesses live in a continuum. There is a question of how easy it is to obtain credit. But the survey doesn't ask how easy it is for whom to obtain credit. Big businesses can obtain credit, and it's getting easier by the minute. But can entrepreneurs obtain credit? Can small businesses obtain credit? Can family businesses obtain credit? At least in the case of Macedonia, the answers are resounding no's. No, it is not easy for small businesses, entrepreneurs, family businesses, and so on, to obtain credit here. Actually, it's virtually impossible. So a general question of is it easy to obtain credit misses the point. Investor protections. One of the parameters in the survey is, are the rights of minority shareholders protected? Again, it's a bit of a bizarre question because it doesn't make distinctions. For example, these minority shareholders, are they foreigners? Are they cronies of the regime? Are they close to the ruling, co ruling coalition? Are they political allies? What happens to these cronies once they fall out of favor, as happened in Russia? Do they still have minority protection? Do they still, are their rights still protected in the institutions, in the judiciary, by the state? Or do they end up in jail? Minority protection in countries such as Macedonia, such as Russia, should be differentiated according to the type of investor. It's not enough to ask a general question. Macedonia has many very good laws. The body of laws in Macedonia is among the best in the world, actually. They are all in the books. Once the government passes a law, the ranking of, of the government, the ranking of the state in doing business changes. Good laws means good business environment, means higher ranking, in the doing business report. But laws on the books mean nothing. 
it's much more important to ask how well the laws are implemented. Who is supporting these laws? Is there a functioning, non-corruptible judiciary? Is the state behind the law? Does it implement the law objectively, judiciously, impartially? Is the country under the rule of law? Or is the law subject to interpretation of the powerful, the mighty, and the well-connected? These are nuances largely lost in the Doing Business Report. So the Doing Business Report is good as an indication of the direction of the state. So if the state embarked on a reform project in order to make itself more attractive to investors, foreign and domestic, the ranking will go up. However, it tells you nothing about the realities of doing business in the country. These are getting worse in Macedonia, not better.